work, um, both in Chinese and English, and I uh, have a quite personal question. You may, you, you may not need to answer. Uh, how do you write? Um, do you write a piece of work, finish it, put it in the drawer, leave it there for a week, for months, for years, then you add, keep constantly editing it, or just like what the rumor said about Mozart, compose the whole symphony in his mind and write it without any corrections and editing? Well, I might disappoint you because I write most things of the sort under deadline <laughs> and pressure. Pressure is a pressure. Some editors say, oh, I'll write something. And a friend will say, well, uh, well, the deadline, no, no, I'm not sorry. Okay. So, uh, the deadline is uh, always the 12th or something like that. So I try to meet every time all the deadlines. I will set aside other grants just for that. But in the English writing, uh, it's basically again and again and again. For my academic book, nobody believes me. I told my students, I said, the first chapter of my uh, Shanghai Modern book took me 22 or 23 revisions. Just stop. I'm still not happy. So for this, I would say the fastest would be three or four revisions. The slowest would be seven or eight or nine. Uh, usually an essay would take me about three to seven days, and each day would be about four or five hours, sometimes six or seven. So it really takes a lot of time, and I don't type well. So sometimes I waste a lot of time doing that. But the, the, the uh, Frustration is that you know there's a phrase there, but you forget about it. That's the hard part. I know I'm finding that phrase. It's somewhere lurking in the back of my mind from some essay I read, but I just cannot recall. So I have to put the right idea in the right place. That's the hardest. Maybe this is almost a thankless job. I mean, this is basically why I cannot write so fast. Although in Chinese, I dash it off, but then I realized that because of the influence of my English, now I'm doing revision, even with my Chinese. So now it's getting harder and harder, so I'm writing less and less. Yes. I'm a literature student from CHK. So uh, I'd like to ask you, like, um, how do you expect uh, us to read your new book? Do you expect us to read in a um, you mean this book, my book? Yeah, yeah, in a light way, light reading, or academic way? And the second question is, do you, um, since you are writing in English, so I want to ask you, what is your opinion about the future of English writing in Hong Kong? Oh, me. That's for the second question. Uh, for my own point of right, she, I mean, a, I'm a casual person. You can pick anything you like. Uh, if you cannot stand it, you pick another essay. Don't write, don't read this book from beginning to end. But of course, always read my dedication. Uh, the best line is dedication to my wife. My meals are home. Uh, but uh, you can, uh, maybe if you are interested in Hong Kong, just pick a few essays on Hong Kong, Kong writing, and leave uh, the Western stuff at the end. But I never believe in reading any book from cover to cover, except, of course, my favorite work. So do not finish the whole book, really. Read a few essays, and see what you can sort of get any pleasure out of it. I do want to emphasize the word pleasure. If you read it with pain, then don't read it. <laughs> I mean, this is not a book for pain. So, uh, now, to get back to your second question, I use the word bleak. Uh, it's a kind of a, a sign of despair because uh, the kind of stuff that I talk about today, I'm sure David understands, you got to it. Most people just don't talk about it anymore. That's why I say it's bleak. Because they, they argue English is basically functional. You study English because you can write in memos. You can do those, you can understand. Language is always culture. Language is never a vehicle. Language is always a culture. Even if you want to use English as for strictly functional utilitarian purposes, you still have to get into the culture. Even if you write technological manuals, you have to know the culture of technology. Uh, in computers, same thing. Certain words from technology are 
get into the English vocabulary, everybody uses the word input. Uh, input, output, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So now I, I borrow the term in, in computer language. You, know. you connect, right? So now I'm called, called, I call my new summer, I call connecting the humanity. How do you make the connect? Uh, so that to me is crucial that no matter what language you do, no matter what time, no matter you, for what reason you want to learn English, there's always the background, there's always something behind it that you have to be curious about. You don't have to get into it. Right? It's, it's like, well, what is behind this? That's the crucial part. Uh, but I think a lot of Hong Kong, especially officials, just pay own attention only to face value so that they make a kind of a report just to make sure the figures are correct. Uh, and everything is done so that Bo Tai Chung can read it. Uh, but no, see, behind that it's all empty. Uh, there's no substance. Now you compare that to Chris Patton's lecture. Chris Patton, whether you agree or disagree, he's, he's a, definitely a red more than Bo Tai Chung. <laughs> uh, you can see, I mean, it comes out with good English. Uh, but not even that is probably dying, maybe declining, I don't know. Uh, what the, what the, uh, when I was going to college, uh, you know, as a graduate student, I audited all the courses by all the big name professors. Not necessarily to listen to the content, but just listen to their style. They, they were great orators. Every one of them knew all of them. Fleming, uh, this guy David Omi, English history, and quite a few in Victorian literature. Just uh, we don't have that. I'm awful as a lecturer in that sense. But you have all of that. Why? Because they're trained that way. So to me, if you want to read, do English well, read it aloud. Just same as in classical Chinese. Read it aloud. If sounds good to your ears, then it's good English. If it's unreadable, it's bad English. Read the official essay, it's all bad uh, So I'm, I'm, I'm full of uh, venom, <laughs> full of uh, criticism against official English. I want to show essays attacking it. And what is it? Uh, so I hope there's a day of survival for all of us. That's what I say for you. Well, oh, finally, Ching. We are free. Is that all right? Uh, hi, Professor Lee. Uh, your new book is about uh, Hong Kong, China, and the world. Uh, my question is that uh, among all the places you have lived in the world, uh, which place is your favorite? Um, I asked this question because I just came here to uh, Hong Kong from America. So I'm, I'm still trying to adapt to the culture here. Uh, so my, my wife and I originally wanted to write a Chinese book, but the best, my, our favorite 10 places in the world, that would be the best, best out of it. Uh, cities only, mainly for me. Uh, uh, if you read some of my stuff, my early stuff, you know, one of my favorite cities is Prague, Polak. Uh, uh, and then it's hard to choose. Uh, I like London uh, because I read so much Dickens when I was in college, uh, but, uh, especially the Chinese translation part. Uh, whatever happens, I don't know if you like it. Paris because of the history. Uh, and then I like some smaller places like Granada for personal reasons in Spain. Uh, and then up north, uh, St. Petersburg there. I've never been to Moscow. Uh, and then you move on to this part of the, the world uh, uh, in Asia, one of my favorite places is Malacca, Maliuja. Uh, I, I think it's, it's charming talking about the colonial history of Macau. Uh, Macau is dying, but Macau is uh, still part of Macau. Uh, and then in China, Jiangnan Xiaozhen, uh, we really, I used to like Shanghai a lot, but not now. Shanghai is beyond me, just too much. Yeah, way behind the yeah. uh, But Jiangnan Xiaozhen, some smaller places like Xuzhou, Zhenjiang, uh, Yangzhou, for sure, Yangzhou, Yangzhou, uh, uh, Suzhou. Uh, 
so Shang Yu Tian Neng Shao Yu Su Han is still true in some way. Uh, in the southern part, uh, I like Hong Kong a lot, but especially Shang Wen. Uh, my, my whole Hong Kong book started from Shang Wen. Basically, that's the old, uh, old Hong Kong. But for that sort of interest, is shared by a lot of people. Now it, I heard that Shang Wen is turning commercial. Quite a few people, expats like like Shang Wen too. Um, let's see what else. There are quite a few places I haven't been to. I would love to go to Egypt uh, because I would go to Alexandria because of the Alexander Quartet, which I read as a college freshman. I'm not very friendly. Hey, hi, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, oh, I, I love that pair. I forgot her name. Uh, all this, uh, you know, mystical aura. So, I mean, when you talk, get to those cities, then, you know, myth and reality all uh, combine. I have no idea whether I'll be disappointed or not. Everybody has his own list cities. Uh, but there used to be the time when countryside is more important. But not now. I hate to say it. How about Taipei? Tai tai yes, Taipei is like hometown. It's hard for me to say because I hated Taipei when I was in college. Uh, you always hated your hometown. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went and then I spent years in the state. I came back and I was still didn't like it. Uh, until about uh, 15 years ago. And one day I told my friends, look, I'm beginning to like Taipei. I don't know why. Now I know. Because at a certain point, there's a kind of a qualitative shift. Uh, the, the people there gradually settle down to their own lifestyle. Of course, before, you know, after uh, the liberation, the heavy liberation, JN and JN, how much you follow, all the people, all the things like that. At a certain point, I think in the early 90s or so, they begin to settle down. Now if you go and watch the election, you can see that for all the sound and fury, the lifestyle will not change. That's what I like about Taipei now. It's a, it's a kind of a Taipei style culture life. Uh, coffee houses, corner. Nothing fancy, nothing big. No skyscraper, unlike Hong Kong. But then you, everywhere you go, uh, you talk to a shop owner, then, then you feel you're part of it. And that's how I feel. Not to mention the book uh, and the classical music. Uh, but Taipei, who knows how long it's going to last? That I know. Another favorite city I have is Shinju. I grew up in Shinju. Uh, Shinju is always, in awesome. I love Shinju, I hate it Taipei because I moved from Shinju to Taipei. Uh, you always love the city of your adolescence. Like a very thin and then when you sort of get get then then you do like an oil help group uh, In America, uh, I used to when I think back, believe it or not, my favorite city is uh, aside from New York is Chicago. I suffered in Chicago. Oh, it's awful. I had all my existential problems in Chicago. Now thinking back, I learned the most from Chicago, uh, and that to me is the prototypical American city. San Francisco is too nice. We don't go back anymore. Not that much. No challenge, not enough challenge. Uh, I hated LA when I lived there. But now thinking back, they have a Disney Hall, and then, then, then it's changing a little bit. So my association with cities are sort of half fictional. You know, not like whether you have candy shots from your friends or not. I, I soak in the atmosphere. Some of my atmosphere is cooked by myself, in my own imagination. So I think it's enough. Right? Hold on, sorry, I think it's really enough. Oh, one last one. Okay, thank you. Eh, more fun. Eh, I think that you have to write a book about reading reading. Actually, how do you write a book about reading reading? Actually, how do you write a book about reading reading? Actually, how do you write a book about reading reading? Actually, how do you write a book how to write a good book report in school? Um, Surprise your no, teacher. That's for my habit only. Oh, you have a friend. Surprise yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Never begin conventionally. I told my students this way. Don't say, well, of course, I'm the minority of one. Don't say, in this report, I want to talk about this. this. Therefore, I will conclude that in the first paragraph. 
If they write it as a detective story, you, you're putting the questions for them, the clues, the questions. How are I going to find it? And then you move on to your argument. Uh, uh, and we'll describe the contents of a book. Use your own language. Never quote extensively. Don't quote extensively. People are bored with reading quotes because they may as well read the original copy. Yeah. And then the conclusion has to be surprisingly good. Or shall we say surprisingly good. In other words, don't get the predictable ending. See, when we have read so many books before, you know, all sound the same. But if I give you some negative comments, you will uh, piss, piss you off, you will angry? Negative comment of your book. If I have negative comment, <laughs> what? Do I feel angry? No, I won't feel angry. I will be amused. Amused. I'll be amused. Yeah. No, no. Provoke me is the best. You can provoke your teacher. You can provoke reader. That's fine. Uh, that's fine. But I don't like personality attack. Uh, don't mix me with the book. So the book can be criticized. I don't really care. There will be a review from the New York, uh, not from the New York Review, from a South China Morning Post. <laughs> By a friend of mine, I said, it's all on my hand. You can do whatever you like. So he criticized it to some extent. Yes, maybe yeah, you write fine. the letter, you write the reading report to the newspaper. Oh, I uh, commend Mr. Lee Ogban, and I post to the newspaper, and then you read it, and angry. <laughs> No, I'm never angry. No, no, that's bad manners. That's bad manners. When somebody goes to Christmas, if they they attack me and my wife personally about our private life, I'm instantly angry. You know, but not about my book. Now we were furious about one such attack, but I won't mention it either. We're not speaking to that all. Yeah, it's not it's not severe because it's not breaks the sort of the ethical code. But several of that I can do. See, I don't believe that a text, once published, assumes a life of its own. I should have said that. It's, it's out of my hands. Really, I really feel that. I now I'm thinking back of, oh, did I write, did I write that? They say, do you like it? No, I don't feel you know, that. So you may feel nostalgic about the time you started writing something. Basically, uh, once the text is produced, that is own life. So that has always been my principle. <laughs> so feel free. Do it, do it. Yeah, many thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.